Hey guys, Targo Cycle and FPV. Uh, we are actually on part four of our video, I think. Let me see. So we had frame, ESC with motors, and then we were supposed to go to flight controller, but we, we showed you flight controller, but we ended up doing the capacitor and the JST, and then making sure the flight controller stayed on. So that was episode, that was uh, part three. So now we're on part four. So part four is actually going to be the flight controller, getting it set up. And in doing that, we're going to end up having to connect a few pieces. Um, which are not part of the flight control, let's say like the BTX or Smart Audio or even the receiver, right? The, um, the uh, nameless RC uh, FrySky D8 mini micro receiver. So uh, first thing we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my nerd stuff on here and I'm going to share with you the screen that we're looking at. So there it is. All right. And what we've got here is um, we've got the... Uh, the flight control here and what you're going to want to make sure you pay attention to is the bottom uh, row of uh, the bottom row of pads right here because we are going to be using some of them uh, especially the TX6 so let me find here it is my flux pen let me get this mouse out of the way okay and what we're going to want to do is before we do anything else we're going to want to go ahead and uh, make sure that we go ahead and put the flux pen to use on these pads on the bottom and then you might as well go ahead and finish the top as well okay there you go all right now let me explain to you what we're doing. So we've got our, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got our VTX from HGLRC, right? Uh, the one thing I do not think, oh, actually, no, it looks like they've got something here. So we're also going to go ahead and pull the wires out, okay? And then there are some screws in here because this is also going to be for the camera. Uh, so this is going to be the mini screws. I'm going to go ahead and put those in there. <clears throat> so they've given us some cable. And what's good about this cable is, number one, HGLRC uses top-of-the-line cable. I'm really impressed. There are some cables that when you heat up the uh, wire inside, the silicone on the outside, the silicone sheet just kind of melts away. These don't. Very impressed with these all, all the way around. So save these wires, okay? They're very valuable as far as getting things done. Now, on our VTX, um, we have two ways to do our VTX here, and I am not jumping the gun here. What I'm trying to show you, though, is that we know on our VTX that we're going to be using smart audio, okay? Now, I don't have to do that part of the wire now, so I'll move the VTX out of the way. But the smart audio on this side is going to be your TX6, which is on the bottom here. So you're going to want to prep that pad anyway, right? And then if you're going to be using a buzzer, I'm not. But if you're going to be using a buzzer, then your B plus or your B minus is going to be right here. And then you've got your TX3s, your UARTs for your 3, and you've got your UARTs for your 6 here. Um, so for the sake of doing this build, I'm just going to use the TX6 for my smart audio. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give myself a little bit of a tin right there now. If I want, I can go ahead and finish the tinning out and just get the whole board tinned underneath. That way I don't have to worry about it again down the road, which is probably not a bad idea. So let me just go ahead and knock that out real quick. All right. And then we have our current and our RSSI on this side. Let me go ahead and just add those anyway. All right. Okay. There. Now, since we are going to be using the TX on this side, I need to find a wire that's going to be useful for the TX on that side. Okay. So... <clears throat> there's a couple things we can do right we can we're going to use some of our wiring because this is going to be the um this is going to be the receiver that we use okay and that is the micro fry sky receiver there's our antenna for it and they give you a little heat shrink for it what they do not give you is wire so we're going to use part of this wire that we got with the vtx is going to be used for that okay <clears throat> so we can also get this tinned if we want to right now but the main thing to note is that that's also going to that's going to go on this side of the board. And it depends on how you want to do it. So some of this wire is going to be used for the VTX. Some of this wire is going to be used for the camera. Okay, and as you can see right here, we've got identical, so we've got plenty. So let's just go ahead and let me make sure I've got this right here. I want to make sure these clips are the same. Ah, they're okay. They're not exactly the same, but they'll do. All right. So um, let's get to getting a wire for the smart audio. Well, we know for the VTX that we're going to be using yellow for video, red for power, and black for ground. <clears throat> and so we've got to find a wire that we can use. And I don't care if you want to use one of these wires. Uh, it depends on how you like to keep track of it or not. But uh, I'm going to see if I can find me just a wire laying around that's not any of these colors. And if I can't, then, like, I mean, green would be good or something like that. And look, I've got some wire here. Um, so I tell you what, I'm just going to take, I'm not even going to take the green. I'm going to take this, I guess it's a red, but it's not really a red like what I was thinking. So I'm going to use that one. I think we can get away with that. Okay. So let me put that over there. 
So this is going to be our smart audio wire. And the reason I'm taking care of this now is because once I mount that board, I won't be able to get to the bottom of it again. So I might as well go ahead and get the smart audio out of the way on the flight, uh, on the flight controller. All right, so let's get our helping hands. Now, usually I'd use a green wire or something. I don't have one handy. And to be honest with you, this does not match this red. So, and it's a lot thinner. So I'm not worried about getting those mixed up. Now, let me just grab my solder, get that tinned up there. And again, we're gonna have to cut that wire back. That's way too long for a board this size. So when we're done, I'm gonna take this now, cut half of it off. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna find my uh, TX6, which is right there. And if you look at how this board is gonna sit, it's gonna sit like this. You can loosely just kind of fit these pieces on to see how you want it to go. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna, I don't remember how I did this one. I think I did this one to where the wire, the antenna came out backwards. Yeah, so it comes out like that, I guess. Uh, so we know our smart audio is going to be uh, our third um, pad from the bottom here, which is also the same as the third pad here. So, and it has to go to TX6, which is going to be right under it, actually. So, uh, I can drop this just like that. And that's what, exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and feed it straight out, uh, straight out the back because it's going to flip right up to the board that's above it, okay? So, let me go ahead and get the tweezers. And we're going to line this up, and we're going to just take this straight out. So, there's TX6 right there. Let's go straight out with it. That's it. It's done. Okay, remember, less than a second, guys, of soldering time with these things. All right, that's the only wire that I'm really worried about making sure is connected before we permanently mount this. So let's go ahead and mount this. And I'm going to show you something here, a little trick. And that is that, as you can see right now, I don't know if you can see it, but I cannot put this board all the way down. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So it's kind of like a little, you can see a little gap there with the wire. I think you can see the sticker through that. And what I've got is that glue, that hot glue that I put down is sticking up enough to where it's hitting that. That's where you take your, take your heat gun and melt that hot glue. And what's gonna happen, what's really cool about this is that hot glue is now gonna melt and you're gonna be able to press the board down. And the coolest thing about it is when it cools, it's actually gonna hold that board in place even better. So think of that, that as a kind of a win-win here uh, for this. All right, so there's your setup right now. That's your um, smart audio cable, and that's all we need to worry about here. Now we're gonna go ahead and tin the rest of the board, okay? So to do that, grab your solder and pretty much do the rest of the pads that are out here. Even if you're not gonna use them, I advise you to do it so that you don't have to worry about it later. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly go around this board and tin everything on this board, okay? If I can, if it'll take, there you go. This is, our, this is gonna be where our receiver goes, all right? Right. Some of these pads aren't taken. This one's not for some reason. So I'm just going to kind of force it here a little bit. Let me see if I can get it to take. Looks like it's going to take care. There it goes. A little harder than I wanted to get, but that's all right. I keep I keep these boards pretty cool for the most part. So I'm not too worried about it. But there are some pads that are being a little stubborn. All right. So the last ones are going to be my LED and my battery. I mean, on my buzzer, which I'm not going to be using anyway. Um, but let's just get that on there. Okay. All right. So with that done, there we go. So now every pad is tinned. That took a little bit longer than I usually see. Um, so the next thing is going to be that we want to set up our transmitter, or sorry, our receiver. Now we can go ahead and put our um, back piece back in here because on mine, the receiver is actually connected to this pole and zip tied to it. So I want to make sure that I set this up properly. So let me go ahead and get this ready. Okay, so uh, first thing is we're going to need our wire for our receiver. <clears throat> and here's our receiver. Uh, no, sorry. Where's my receiver? It's right here. Okay. So I'm going to take, I mean, I've got a ton of wire here. I'm just going to take a piece of this. Now, I know the camera is going to go right here, and that doesn't take, it's not a very long run either way. So I'm still going to give the camera enough wire here 
for it to hold out. There you go. And we'll just leave that like that. That's definitely plenty of wire. And then for the, uh, for the receiver, I'm gonna come over the top here like this. And I think what I'll do is I'll give the receiver this much. All right. And I guess if you had to see the actual length of that wire, I would say that I cut about 40 millimeters, okay? All right, now we're gonna go ahead and strip this and we're gonna make sure that we get uh, everything on the flight controller done properly. So let's go ahead and tin all that up. Okay, there's one. Put it in the solder, in the flux paste, two and three. All right. Now, I gotta tell you that um, while this is a flight controller setup, uh, I really think that I'm gonna go ahead and do the receiver as well. Because trying to do this receiver after it's, after these wires are already um, soldered is gonna be really hard and it could cause you a little bit of problem and I wanna get that heat shrink on there as well. So let's take a, a break here to do the um, receiver. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna keep doing what we were doing, except we're gonna strip the other side of the wire and we are gonna bring this little micro receiver out, okay? And uh, we're gonna prep that up. So we're gonna take our flux pen and hit the pads here. And there's gonna be three little pads on this board. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this to view it right, but the three pads are right here. Okay, so it's one, two, and three, and they're on this side. And I'll see if I can maybe, let me see if I can do this properly. All right, so if I try to show you on this camera, maybe, bear with me a second. There you go. I don't know if you can see that, but that's going to be three pads. Maybe you can see those. I don't see them. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so you see these three at the top right here. Okay, so that's going to be the pads that we're working with. So let me go ahead and swap screens again here. There we go. Let's zoom out. And so we're going to get those pads ready. So here it goes. Now, this is going to be a little sucker because it's going to try to run all over the place because it's really light and small. So just get something to hold it down in place, right? Okay, now where do my wires go? <clears throat> no, they're underneath. Okay, there's one, two, and three. I'm going to use the side that I've already tinned, and I'm going to tin this uh, receiver real quick. And like I said, I don't mean to go out of order, but it would make no sense to try to get you to do this after the fact. So this is going to be S-Bus is the first one. And then we're going to do our 5-volt is going to be the last one. And then ground is going to be our middle. Now, guys, this is a very tight solder. If you're not, if you don't have a still hand, you're going to have a very much a hard time. Be careful um, because these are these do get a little difficult and you do, you do not have any room for long stretches of wire. OK, so try to make your wires, as the, the exposed strands as short as possible. All right. So there's one, there's two. And let's go ahead and solder on the S bus here. And there we go. And that's three. All right. So we now have the receiver done. Uh, the wires have been put on. Okay. Make sure that looks good. And it does. I, I think that looks really well. All right. Now what we want to do is go ahead and put our antenna on. Okay. There's that. And depending on how I'm going to stick this onto the frame, let's look at it real quick. So here's our frame, right? So the way mine is, is I believe it comes like this. And then I don't know if I had it go backwards or what, but my guess is that it wouldn't be a bad idea to just kind of do it like that. Now here's mine and mine is the other way where you can bind it like this. So I guess we could do that too, either way. Okay, so we'll do it like this and we'll set it out on the side. So to do that, we've got to go ahead and put in our heat shrink. All right, and we're gonna straighten this wire out. We're gonna fit all the heat shrink in there properly. I am going to put some glue over these connections right here because this is where things usually fail. So let me just do that. That way, when I turn the heat shrink on and heat this gun up, it remelts that glue and kind of closes that whole open gap. I'm going to do the same on the antenna because the antennas are the first things to usually fall off on a receiver uh, after a bad accident. So if anything on the receiver goes bad, it's usually going to be the antenna breaking. So let's just do that. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and let the heat shrink take over. Okay, and it's gonna just remelt that glue, and man, it's gonna make like this perfect seal. Okay, so there goes that, there goes that, and there we go. Now be careful because this glue is gonna be super hot. 
So, but at the same time, you want to kind of mash it in there as best you can. You don't get some on your fingers like I just did, but you want to get it in there as best you can to not only just protect the wires, but also kind of seal all of that out from the elements, okay? All right, so now that that's done, mine's turned like this. And so what I'm gonna do is I, I will zip tie mine, but to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a hot glue strip right down here between the antenna and that chip. And that's where the uh, standoff is gonna sit. So if you look at that right there, okay, that's gonna sit just like that. We're gonna let that cool a little bit and then I'm gonna put a zip tie on there to really hold it in place. But just let it cool for a second, all right? So while that's cooling, I'd like to have it at least as little bit straight as possible. Okay, while that's cooling, we're gonna get our zip tie now and get it ready. And I came across the, I went around the top on this one, but I'm gonna go around the bottom this time. All right, so let's do like this. Ooh, that's gonna be kind of tough because that's your bind button. So let's not do that. Let's go this route, no. Hmm. That's your bind button. And that is your power wire. So you know what, too bad. We'll just do the bind button thing and hope for the best. So I'm just gonna come around the side and the top here. So this should actually not be too bad. I think this is actually gonna work out pretty good. So we're just gonna basically come around the side here and kind of wrap it around just like this. Now let me, let me move the zip tie a little bit because I need to tighten it. Yeah, I'd say that that's good. Okay, now I don't necessarily want it that high. There we go. There, that's what I'm looking for right here. And I don't think it's gonna be hurting the wires too much, but let me check and make sure that we have not kinked any of those. And I don't think we have, I think those are actually gonna be okay. But you know what, I can't, I can't tell. So in that case, I'm just gonna cut it and see if I did or not, did I? Damage any of the wires? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I guess the sure way to tell will be when I power it up. But what I was hoping was to crisscross this zip tie. Um, so I kind of want it to come from the top here like this and get to the bottom like that. But it looks like that's just going to be a little too difficult to get done. But let's just see if there's another option. So let's try it again. All right, and maybe this time I can go like this, get off the bind button, hopefully. No, that's right on the bind button. Well, I guess I'll just do it the way I did the last one. So I'm gonna come up with something kind of cooler, but honestly, it looks like it's gonna be a little bit of a pain. But that's part of trial and error here. So I was trying to come up with something that would kind of have a little bit nicer look. But at the end of the day, I guess that is not as important as making sure this sucker is on there good. You know what? Actually, um, I got an idea here that may actually just work without a zip tie. So once it's on there, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to encase the edges. I'm going to go over those in hot glue here. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And I bet you anything, that's gonna hold pretty darn good. All right, so maybe I don't have to worry about it right now. Because that actually is, gonna, yeah, that's gonna hold really nice, especially when I hit it with the heat gun one more time to melt all that. All right, so now that that's done, all right, let's go ahead and connect this part because we know that this is inevitable, it has to be. So what we've got here is we've got our five volt on the outside, our gram in the middle, and our S bus in the center. Okay, so we're just gonna go five volt on the outside, Oh, actually, let me see if I can make these wires a little shorter. I'm not sure I want to. I think what I'll do is I'll just tuck the wires away. I don't think I want to make them shorter. Yeah, so let's just do that. So I'm just going to come from the inside, right? So let's just go around here. And I have not tinned this yet. I just realized that. So let me go ahead and put some flux paste on here. Twist these up. And let's tin this up. I only tin one side of the wire when I got these out. So it's, there you go. Put that there. All right, because there's our five volt. And now let me tin up the ground. 
So we'll use our flux paste again. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and wire the ground now. Just like that. Okay. And now let's take our S bus. It's right here, and we're gonna tin that up too. And to do that, we gotta put our flux paste on this one as well. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now let's go ahead and wrap that around. And we are cooking with the grease. Here we go. All right, so we now have our receiver wired up. All right, and so our flight controller is looking good. There's only one thing left to really do on the flight controller, and that is going to be to get our um, <clears throat> camera and our VTX set up. So here's our camera cable, right? And we know that's going to go right here. All right, and the other thing is we know that this wire is kind of long. This is definitely a long wire for camera. So I may shorten it up just a little bit because the camera is actually right here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's shorten that up just a bit to about right like that. All right, now, once I do that, and just to measure that wire, I will tell you that from the connector, it's going to be roughly, what is that, 25, 30 millimeters? So it's about, yeah, 30 millimeters between. All right, so let me just get that ready. Uh, it's 28 is what it is. So round it to 30. All right, so let's go ahead and get that ready. And we can solder this onto the flight controller next. All right, and then we'll have our camera done. And then the only thing left is our VTX. <clears throat> our VTX, excuse me. And then we are ready to get this sucker in the air. Okay, so I wasn't wanting to make these segments too long, but there's really a hard to chop this one up. All right, so I'll just try to zoom through this one and then we can do the programming as this next segment instead of doing it all at one time. All right, so there's our camera uh, wires. And now we're gonna go ahead and tin these up. So just get them separated a little bit. And get your soldering iron. And let's get to it. Okay, so we're gonna do one, two, and three. There we go. Okay, and now we want to go ahead and solder that to the uh, flight controller. So we've got our camera right here, and it's going to go ground, camera, and five volt. So let's go ground. After we're done, we'll twist, we'll twist these wires up, but let's just go ahead and do it right now. So we're going to do, uh, let me make sure I've got them seeing this right. Ground, yeah. We've got ground right here. And then we've got our camera, which is our yellow wire, which is going to go right here. All right. And then we've got our red wire, which is our 5 volt, which is going to go right there. Okay. And now we can twist these up. Do a nice little, make sure it's got a good tight fit on it. Okay. So there's that, right? So now we can hit hot glue here and we can hit hot glue here, but now we've still got to get this one. Okay. So on our, uh, on our uh, setup here, let me move this. I gotta clean this for you. Okay, so on our setup here, we've got ground, VTX, and battery. Well, our we know that our VTX is the HDLRC, and if you open your manual up on the HDLRC VTX, you will notice that where is it? The input voltage right here is going to be seven volts to twenty six. So you can go to your battery on this one and not have to go to a five volt. So let's find our VTX here. And remember how this is going to sit. This is the back of the quad. The VTX is going to be turned backwards. Um, that's how I have it on mine, which is, means the antenna is closer to the front because we need that run for the antenna to come out. That means that uh, our connections are all of about, oh, probably that long, especially if you're going to do it underneath. And that's exactly what I want to do is I want to run these wires underneath. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the same thing again. We're gonna use what we cut off on the wiring and we're gonna tin it. So let's just strip it and then use a uh, flux paste here and then we'll end up tinning it. So just twist the uh, strands. There we go. So there's one wire. We still gotta do our ground. 
is two. All right. And then we've got our video, which is here also. Oh, actually, I guess this is the wire. That's not it. This is our video. And there we go. And then here is our ground. And we know we've got the smart audio cable already run. We did that earlier. Let's just get our ground done. And again, just like with the receiver, if we don't get the VTX done properly now, it's going to be a real pain to do it later. So it's kind of a, you got to knock it out now when you can, right? So let's do this now. We've got to tin both sides of these wires. So I'm just going to put the wire halfway in the grip here. And I'm just going to tin both sides at the same time. And that way we can knock this out rather quickly. Ready? So we're going to tin this side. There we go. And we're going to tin this side. Done. The same thing with the power wire. So we will tin this side here. Tin this side here. Okay. Boom. Last time, to this side, to that side. Okay. All right. Now, um, let's see what we've got here. So, to do this properly, we are going to go ahead and solder these directly to the flight controller first. Uh, and uh, so, we've got our battery on one end, which is our farthest end right here. So, I'm going to go ahead and tin that. And let me see how I want to do this because it's going to be on top of it there. So let's go ahead. We're going to do this from, we're going to come this direction, right? Because this is actually going to be sitting on top. So let's just do that. That way we don't have any unnecessary wires facing outward, okay? And then we're going to take our, uh, I believe, our VTX will be next. Okay. And then I believe it's our ground that is last. Okay, there we go. So we've got our wires there, and now we've got to prep our VTX, right? So let's go ahead and prep our VTX for the wires that we're about to solder to it, right? So there we go. And we'll do them underneath, which should be pretty cool then, because those will be, for the most part, will be kind of hidden. And so here's what we know. Let's go ahead and run the solder on it. All right. And it's kind of misleading. Don't make the mistake that I made when I first did this board, which is that they've got the silk screening of the board uh, like the the, the um, let me show you here so here's the pads or the, the the solder points but the words start here so at the beginning i always said okay this says 7 to 26 and the pads right here so i thought these were together they're not this is referring to the farthest pad these actually go in order of the pads here so this is the first one that's the first one second second they're not side by side don't make that mistake i did and even now when I'm in a hurry or something, I tend to make that mistake every once in a while. I catch it, but I still tend to make it. So it's, uh, it is definitely a, a hard mistake to get over. I guess once you get used to it, that's it. All right, so we've got our pads tinned, and now we know that we're going to be setting this backwards like this. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can get this to reach these wires. Okay, and to do that, it has to be soldered pretty much like that all right so we've got to make sure that we get this soldered that way so to do that i'm just going to lay the board kind of kind of whoppy job like this and i'm going to bring the wires down like this so the first wire is going to be the red wire it's going to be our voltage in i'm going to go ahead and put that one there second one will be our ground wire i believe let me make sure yeah ground wire and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of lay this down whoppy jod and just put that one in there. All right, so hold on. Just like that. OK. 
Okay, and then now our third one is actually our um, smart audio, and it's not the video yet. So the smart audio is going to be a little different because this one I'm going to have to make kind of long, and then just tuck it uh, under the board when it's done. So let me go ahead and do that. There we go. We're going to tin that up. So put the flux paste on there. Twist the strands real good, and make sure that when you're tinning this tinning it, sorry, you do not have it over the boards, okay? So you don't want solder to accidentally drop on the boards, <clears throat> drop on the boards because the this board is super small and you wouldn't see it most likely. All right, so that's going to be our OSD, which is going to be number three. Okay, right there. Uh, let me get rid of some of that. There we go. Okay, and now the last one is going to be the video. This might be the hardest to fit on here because of the amount of space left, but I'm hopeful that I can make it happen one way or the other. Now that might have been far reach, so I don't know. Let's see if I can move this board around just enough, get that video case. See, because how these are gonna fit, it's gonna be awesome. But you gotta get that video cable to fit too. And to do that, I'm trying to just finagle this as much as I can. Uh, that's not gonna work. Let me see if I turn it this way. Yeah, that might work right there. If I turn it like this, just twist the board a little bit, then my video, now you guys don't have to do it like this. I do it like this because I really like to try to hide the wires if I can sometimes. So let me just put that video wire on, just like that, and that's perfect. All right, looks like we're done with that. So now what I'm gonna do is just uh, get our five millimeter standoffs right here. Let's go ahead and put these down. Just like that. All right. I'm hoping this will close up and fit, but I have this feeling it's might give me a small problem. And if it does, then we're gonna have to make some of this a little bit smaller, but not sure yet. It's going to be a very close, close fit. I did mine a little different when I did this build, um, but uh, there's a couple different options here. So I'm just curious to see how this is going to go and if it's going to come out looking, if it's going to come out fitting properly. It should. I didn't put this much time into it because I thought it wouldn't, but let's just see. It could be off by like two millimeters if that, and if it is, then we'll have to deal with it. All right. So we're gonna take this now and put our BTX on, and make sure our wires stay hidden and tucked away. And they definitely look good. So now you just push the wires away that are kind of getting into the standoffs there. There we go, one, two, three, and four. God, that looks great. All right, now you can put the um, fasteners on. And be careful when you put these on. There are spots on these boards that will snap because uh, they have very, very small components right next to the fasteners. And so if you're using like, like what I was using there, a socket uh, set or like this, you gotta be careful that you don't hit something else because uh, they it will happen, I promise you. And you will get furious. I did at least, it made me pretty mad. Uh, and it's my fault, but it still just pisses me off. So I can't say that just because I did it, I'm not allowed to get upset. All right, let's put the third one down and see. Okay. And then we will do the fourth one. They're not the easiest things to put on, I can promise you that. Not when you got fat sausage fingers like mine, but it happens. All right, so there we go. Okay, now first thing I want to do is just kind of like, without without worrying about, it, I just want to put the top on and make sure that we clear everything that we're supposed to clear. And why this isn't okay there. All right, let's see where's the top of this. Put that away because we're done soldering at this point. So here's the top. 
Yep, and that's going to be perfect. Okay, that is just fitting. Uh, I'm very happy with that, actually. That came out great. All right, so now what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and get the camera in. So to do that, we're going to find the spot on the camera. And I think I used the second row. So grab one of the screws that came with the camera. Look at the Phillips, if I'm not mistaken. And I hope that's long enough to go through this side. It should be. Yep. And you just go into the second row. You've got like four rows down there. Go to the second one. Let me grab my screwdriver here. Okay. I don't know what the hell that is. I need my Phillips, not this crap. All right, there we go. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and pre-angle it because I know that's where it's going. So let me just go ahead and get this ready. I guess this is going to be a little bit longer of a take. I apologize, guys. Tried to keep them short, but it's not working as well on this last one. All right, so that's okay, though. We were, we're pretty much done here anyway, so we're just going to go ahead and pop this in now. All right, and then we're going to put this in the slots where it goes, which is right here and here, just like that, okay? Look at that, it's perfect, that looks great. All right, now, with that done, the only thing left to do is gonna be to put the antenna on right here, okay? Because we're gonna have to fit that through there in a little bit. So let's put the antenna on, make sure it snaps on. And if you have a hard time with it, like I sometimes do, just use a flat surface, like your tweezers or something that you use during the build. Once you get it lined up, you should hear it snap. There it goes, okay. And then you feed the uh, cover on like this and run the antenna through the back there. And then you pop the camera piece on the sides right here. Just like that. And adjust everything and before you know it drone is done. Now we're going to go ahead and put our finishing touches right here. Okay. There's one screw. Two screws. And the third one. Okay, now, for the most part, you are pretty much done with this build, okay? You can, oops, I can take this cap off. There we go. And this is what it looks like, and I think it looks pretty darn awesome, okay? I'm very pleased with this build. But before we go any further, there's a few things I want you to do. The first one is I want you to make sure that you've got enough room that you're not putting too much tension on anything. So just verify your install. All right, now I've got little glue strands here I need to peel off and stuff. And we also have not done our, um, our uh, receiver wire yet, okay, which we need to put. And you've got plenty of options for that one. I believe on mine, yeah, I ran mine just like this. So let me show you what I did, okay? So I came out through this way and I'll explain to you why here in just a second. So there we go. And then I run the zip tie like this. And I'm just gonna feed this until it gets all the way closed. Okay, so just kind of gently feed it just like that. All right. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna run this cable up here. 
All right. And I can run it one, two ways. I can run it behind it like that, or just like that. I mean, it's either way. All right. So let me go ahead and get heat treat now. Run it down here, just like that. Okay. And that's going to get that wire to stay nicely. And then we'll just cut that little bit of it off. So here it goes. that and now I guess when I cut it I'll cut it in an angle just to kind of give it a cool little look um, so just cut it just like that there you go now you got your like little fin there and then this one I did not mess with it you can set it straight out back do whatever you want it's good to go either way and now we want to do is make sure that the bottom screws are tight into our standoffs which they are all right cleaned off okay guys so there's the build that is the build in a nutshell that is a hundred percent done now um, I'm almost hundred percent done uh, not too much left to do but uh, mainly to show you now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get it ready to be powered up so, so uh, that being said let's go ahead and go back to our main screen here and there you go okay so here you go here's the build uh, it's pretty much under an hour build, I think, um, for the most part. If I wasn't having to explain it, a lot of it, it would have been easily under an hour. Uh, so we've got our receiver in the back. We've got our full stack, our 413 stack right there. And uh, we've got our camera up front, our four, mo four motors. We've got our LiPo pad underneath, our JST, and our cap, okay? So for all purposes, this is pretty much done. What I'm going to do is do a continuity test, make sure it's all good. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that real quick because that should be the next thing you do. So before I end this video, let's just do that real quick. All right, so continuity test. Well, basically, what we're trying to do is make sure we don't have any power and ground touching at the same time. And to do that, the easiest thing to do now is to just go to your JST connection and um, find your power and your ground. There's my ground, right? And there's my power. As long as I don't hear a beep, I'm good. We go ahead and shop this out. Oh, this is not the easiest to fit these in, but let's just see. All right, I, got, I don't have any beeps. If there was, you'd hear this. Okay, so that looks good. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, now I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I'm pretty sure that if I was to check this now, I think that I would be able to get it to power up. Um, only problem is I don't have a battery with the JST, so I've got to find my... JSD plug. That was my dustpan. My apologies on that. Uh, and I don't see my JSD plug here. So we'll do a power up here in just a minute when I have more time and I can find my plugs. Okay, so that's it. Uh, let me now, now we can go back to this. Okay, so there it is, guys. 44 minutes because I'm just wasting time jib jabbing. I will power this up here in just a minute, uh, but that's pretty much it, all right? So congratulations if you're able to get to this point. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and fire it up and then we'll get it programmed, okay? If you have any questions, make sure to email me at tark at cyclonefpv.com. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel right there, and that'll help support me uh, and all these little efforts I do. And then there, uh, follow, like, whatever, that one from Facebook. And other than that, guys, spend time with your family. God bless y'all, fly safe, and we'll see you soon, bye.